So I needed to come up with a title plate for a game that I'm working on, and I got sidetracked so hard. AI word art is so interesting. So we're going to go over the basics and some of the tricks I found to help me get the best results. So at its core, we're just using the image to image algorithm. So we are putting in the word as an image, and then we are giving it some sort of phrase, and then it's following that phrase. And if you give it a really high strength value, it starts creating some really abstract images. So for instance, this is lobster, this is gothic, this is science education, and this is art supplies. So this brings me to my first tip, and that is to use light fonts on dark backgrounds. So I found that when you use light backgrounds, it ends up completely washing out the font. So you end up not being able to see anything really. And when you do get a phrase, it's usually very altered. So it ends up being less visible. Dark fonts on dark backgrounds did work a little bit better, but there was still a lot of washed out letters. And so you have to be a little bit careful with that. Now that we have some word art, can we animate with it? Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> So there's many different ways of animating with stable diffusion. So I wanted to show you a few today. So to start off with, I wanted to show you a recursive method where you put the image algorithm back into the image to image algorithm and you just kind of repeat that process over and over again. So your image is progressively changing in whatever your prompt is. It kind of looks like it's decaying into something or diffusing into some other type of thing. The next animation method is to just use the strength parameter and just scale it. So this one's particularly interesting because I think a lot of people assume that the strength variable acts in a very linear way where it's like if you're point five, you're like 50% this, 50% that. But in this example, it seems to be very non-linear. So as you get to higher percentages, it, it shifts really quickly from the actual image to the style. So there's a really, there's a much sharper cutoff than you might expect. And finally, there's the more common kind of rotoscoping type method where you take a set of images and then you put all of them through stable diffusion with the similar seed and prompt. And so you get out somewhat consistent images that can be used to create a video. So here I have an animation of three different prompts that we're all using the same values. And these are the different results that we get. So as you can see, some of them like art supplies is actually pretty clear in what it's saying. Uh, but the romantic comedy is very abstract. Although if you stand back a little bit, you usually can see that it still says art, which is pretty impressive. Um, and then there's also the goth girl one, which is kind of an in between where you can usually on some frames, it's very clear that it says art and the video overall makes it very clear that it says art. But there are individual frames where it's very hard to tell. So this brings me to the second tip, which is there's usually a trade off between style and clarity. So if you want to have a really interesting image or video of words, oftentimes that comes at the cost of clarity. And if you have a very clear thing, then oftentimes that doesn't have as interesting of a visual. So there's kind of that trade off. The sweet spot I found was between 0.7 and 0.8. But that also does depend on the word that you're using. So the next thing I wanted to explore is whether you can make a font with AI art. This was a lot of fun, but a lot more challenging than I expected. You need to know a lot about scripting or it becomes a lot of menial labor. And even with scripting, you usually do need to do a fair amount of really tedious tasks. So it's not exactly the most enjoyable thing, but the <laughs> fonts are pretty <laughs> adorable. Fonts end up being a little bit more challenging because fonts are vectorized and they are also black and white. So you lose some of the appeal that the word art had in the first place. So I have put together a few fonts now, one of the difficulties that I am having is that a lot of the fonts, unless you use some sort of bitmap font, they start looking really bad if you just convert them to black and white straight away. So I need to look a little bit more into details on how to do bitmap fonts, because it would be really cool if I could just have like a forest as my font. I, I don't know. <laughs> so there are a few different web services to give you fonts from images. Calligraph is one in particular. It seemed like a really good tool, although it didn't work as well as I would have liked for this particular purpose. But I think we're so far out outside of their scope that like, it's kind of understandable. <laughs> so using calligraphy, is basically just printing out an image and then you just kind of fill out that form. So you just plop down all of your letters on the different points and then it spits back out a TTF file. So it does all the vectorization for you, but it does lose all the color. So at that point, you really have to pay attention to whether you have the styling that you want from the font. So it's more about the outline than the actual colors in place. So here's an example with the Aquapunk ex example I showed earlier. So you can see that it lost a lot of its character, although calligraphy did do a very good job of converting it. It's a pretty difficult thing to convert. So um, I don't. Yeah. So I haven't actually looked into using SVG fonts, but that might be a really nice way of hiding this over. These are in bitmaps. So you need to find some way of converting them to SVG. There was a YouTube video about stable diffusion and converting those things to SVGs, and it seemed to work pretty well. So that might be a route to get to SVG fonts. 
Although I am currently a little bit exhausted from fonts, so I think I'm going to take a break from fonts. This brings me to a third tip, which is to make sure that the writing is large. So if you have small writing, like I tried to do full alphabets, you end up with the degeneracy or kind of like the clarity falling off really rapidly before you actually get any interesting styles. So making sure that you have big fonts or big words. And then if you if you need to use a large word, then maybe splitting that up into multiple words is a better way of going about it. So this is how it looks in Google Colab. So you basically just have a prompt, you have your image, and then it just spits out a new image. There's a few steps before this where you import all the scripts and stuff, but it's pretty straightforward. If you find any examples that work particularly well with word art, I would love to know. I feel like Goth Girl really caught me off guard. I did not expect that to be as interesting as it was. Um, there's other things like dragons that were pretty neat and lobster was a pretty neat one. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of prompts that you just wouldn't expect to be as interesting as they are. So finally climbing out of this rabbit hole. <laughs> These are the images that I got for my game title. And I think this is my favorite right now, although I'm still looking because there's just so many cool images images out there. <laughs> Summary of the tips, big words, light font, dark background, 0.7 to 0.8 strength, and yeah, have a good day. <laughs>